Welcome to the GJ America Review, a cruiser in disguise. Welcome back to WoW's Operation Replays, and today, well, we've got the GJ Merker, the Tier 8 tech ship for the German gunboat line. A very impressive destroyer. I thoroughly enjoyed this ship. The Z-31, not so much, but the Merker, I loved this ship. I really did. Now, we're going to get right into the economic boost. And there's a very special thing about this economic boost. So, we're going to go to the armory first. We're going to go to containers. And German destroyers. If you complete the German destroyers collection, you will get the Iron Cross camouflage and a perma boost package for this ship. If you complete this collection... It's all available for coal, for 2,000 coal. So a very easy, it's very well worth it. It's totally worth it, in my opinion. This ship is definitely worth it. And it's a, for a beautiful camel. The Iron Cross camel is beautiful. So with the perma boost and without the contributor flag, it's 5% to credits, 55 to ship XP, 65 to commander XP, and then 100% with a clan. So again, pays to be in a clan. Armor White, she definitely takes more out of a cruiser. Or at least a heavy destroyer. Like, a real heavy destroyer. So, kind of like the Soviet Khabarovsk is and everything. It has 19mm bow and stern. The superstructure of 13. But then she gets a 25mm plating on the side. Now, if you're a DD and you're facing that ship... Um, HE is just going to do very little. Use AP. You'll pin that all day long. This whole section here. So let's pull that armor away. Yeah, you'll pin this with AP. And just chunk this ship's health away. Literally. The quick, but we're so used to shooting HE at destroyers. We forget to switch to AP. So remember to switch to AP on this ship if you're in randoms. Because you'll just pin it all over. Especially if you hit it on the side. Now, for health pool wise, uh, with the skills and everything, or with the hull and everything upgraded, no survivability expert. It's twenty three. It's twenty two thousand three hundred with the hull, or with the sorry, with the perk. It ends up being over twenty five thousand. So, there is a pretty staggering difference. You obviously want both of them to bring the most out of the ship. But you can work with it without the skill. At least until you get enough points. At least to 13. Then you should get the skill. Now, artillery-wise, she has five 150mm guns. Now, they have a base reload of 6.1 seconds. Minimum switch time... Of 6.1, 180 of 22 seconds, and a max dispersion of 49 meters with a, well, roughly a 10.9 kilometer range. With the range upgraded, it comes up to around 12 kilometers. So, in terms of op purposes, if you just wanted to run it in ops or co op or wherever you fancy, um, you could work with the 10 kilometer range, honestly. Unless you're going to really run it in randoms, you're going to want to. Unless you run it in randoms, you, there's no need to have the upgraded range. Now for the HE shells, it's 1800 max damage, 12% of fire, 38mm armor pin with an 835 velocity. So they're actually fairly decent ballistic shells. Now... The way I have my AP shell set up, it comes out to almost 4,000 damage per, well, armor-piercing shell. And the same velocity, 835. And I'll get into that why mine is actually higher. Now, torpedoes, they're basically the same. She gets basically, well, she has a really odd torp setup. She gets basically two racks of two on each side, and then a middle rack of four. So it's kind of an odd setup. But basically all the torps have, well, 
a six second 180 not a minute and a half reload time a 12 kilometer range a max damage of almost close to 17,000 and an abysmal speed of 50 knots and you'll see me aim these torps in the replay they're required to be aimed in a very specific way to even hit the target so I'll pay attention to how I launch the torps because that's where a big where a small part of the damage comes from and you're gonna to want to learn how to use these torps just so you have that skill now for depth charges of course my damage is gonna be higher because I have a skill perk that jumps that up so so the damage, how I have it set up is 2420, two charges, 10 bombs in a load with a 40 second reload time. Again, you have to drive over the destroyer to even, well actually no, you don't have to because the depth charges are on the side. So you basically still have to drive at least halfway over to the destroyer and they come off the sides here, right there. Like they pop off right on the side, which is kind of an odd setup, but uh, it's interesting. AA wise, not the best AA. Uh, well, at an AA rating of 45, it's not the best. Like I said, well, four quad mount, well, 20 millimeters. Then she gets four dual mount, 37 millimeters. Abysmal continuous at 179, 76. Continuous it makes up the bulk of it at 144 with the long-range mediums being 98. So it's pretty pitiful 3.5 range so Again against carriers Just stay dark Maneuverability wise it's actually decent uh, 36 knots and then when you add her improved engine boost that she got this next class patch she goes pretty decently fast now Turning circle at 760 with a 4.4 rudder shift. Now, in terms of like her ability, her turning circle, it's not the best. Like Akatsuki has a pretty similar one, but when you look at Kid, it has 620. Benson even shorter at 570. So there is a huge difference in the turning circle. She does have a tight turning circle, so keep that keep that aware, or at least a large turning circle. Now the concealment is fully built into it. Of course, I would never give you guys a full, like, oh, I'm going to throw you out with a very large lighthouse build. No, I'm going to give you a full concealment build. That's six point three. Okay, so let's go to the modules. So main armament one, engine room protection. Aiming systems mod one, steering gears, and then concealment. Again, like if you took the rudder or the artillery range, it would only go to about 12 kilometers, so you're not missing a huge amount. Now, for consumables, she gets damage control, minimum of three smokes, minimum of three engine boosts, and that's without superintendent, so it would be four. If you took superintendent. Now for the build. Um, we'll go over a full build. But this is how I have it set up. To best maximize the ship to its strength. Preventative maintenance. Extra heavy ammunition. For the extra AP damage. And the depth charge damage. Mostly a armor piercing damage. Adrenaline rush and concealment. For a full build. I would go with last stand. Survivability expert, superintendent, and then after that, I would probably go with consumable enhancements, and then gun feeder, just because that's how I would run it. Now, you could switch off these last three perks for sure and put AA battery specialist. You can even go and switch it so you get the main battery AA expert for the extra range. Totally, you could do absolutely do that. And that, with, you know, everything, would jump you to around 15 kilometers. 
But I would honestly, like I said, recommend this build. And I wouldn't recommend taking priority target anymore. It would used to be useful for if it was a one skill, but incoming fire alert is basically the new um, priority target anymore. But that is basically the Merker. It's in, other than her camouflage, with the iron cross camouflage, and then you get her base camouflage. If you didn't, there's no point to get this camouflage when you can get the iron cross camo for free. And the Burma boot. So there's no point to even buy this when you can get this for free. Literally for free. And that's a pretty hard bargain these days. So let's get right into the review and we'll show you how she does it. Hello and welcome to the GR Macquery review. I know I've been putting this one I've been was putting off for a long time. Because I knew they were going to give us speed boost on this ship. So I was waiting till they gave us it, that particular consumable to really show this ship. Because, I mean, I grounded without speed boost. But I can truly say this ship is even better now with the speed boost. That speed boost gives you a lot more man maneuverability. And you will see this in this replay. Now I am divved up with a Fobeda... Nebraska, Bismarck, and a Grom. Right off the bat, I'm going to go right for the second wave. Because this isn't a normal DD. This is a cruiser DD. So play it more like a stealthy cruiser than a DD. I have HE loaded, but I'm going to switch to AP because the AP on this ship is ridiculously good. Like, really good. Like, I cannot say, express how good this AP is. And the L beam is phenomenal. But it does have a huge, it's, it's disadvantage because it does have such a decent detectability. It is outspotted. So, I mean, like it is, it's just a mini cruiser. If you play it like a mini cruiser, you'll have a lot of fun in this ship. Enemy ships detected in the northwest. Oh, and I guess, yeah, we had, yeah, a Benson and a Kudrop too. Now, when you do drop the Torps, those are a little bit fast. But you want to aim them, like, on the white line, but at about halfway ahead on the white line. Because they are so slow. I... So I'm basically, up terms, I want them to shoot me. I want them to get spotted, because I'm not going to have any spotting. Data. Smoke screen set. You get two corpses there. Thank you. But you just see how that was just a little bit of damage and it just kills everything. Enemy cruiser suck. Like the AP is just slapping everything Enemy still. Put like three citadels in, into it, and you're doing like 10k damage. Easy. A very close dodge there. Engine 
boost activated. Attention, transport ships detected. Destroy the escorting ships. Once they get to this angle, it is a little bit hard, but you can still citadel at this angle. It just takes some aim. Like, right there, we do about 9,000 with two citadels. But I mean, that was 14 citadels, and we're up to 100 and, well, 14k. But I mean, you can see that we're, that the Smooth Breeze really does make this shift so much more enjoyable. And we aim about halfway across the line because you don't aim on the line, otherwise, you'll miss. It has around 13,000. Torque, pick it up. And we're up 21 Citadels and 184k. Again, you play this thing like a giant cruiser, you'll have fun in this ship. It's a very fun ship. I cannot say bad things about the ship. I really did enjoy this ship. I was going to go for the cruisers. Or the other bad, the Nagatos. But I decided, you know, there's a Grom, there's a Fabeda, there's a Benson. I might as well just go for the Amagi. Engine boost activated. Attention! Enemy battleships detected! Act with caution! Attention! Clarifying the order. Cover the retreat of our transport ships. And we spawn the basically all the other battleships for some for some reason. I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me that it was probably my fault. And if it was, it's, it was probably my fault. But the Vincent and the Grom are in very bad spots with that kind of firepower.
Three torps. Now I can't smoke up because I gotta keep running because they are right on top of me. Benson's just gonna get deleted from from open gunning. I mean, the Groms lost a lot of hell. The Benson's taking a crap ton of HP loss. I'm gonna drop Torps on the Izumo. Benson goes down to Nagato. Engine boost deactivated. We do get detected because we're in the Nagato zone. Smoke generator we do started. pick up the Azuma. We're at 230k. angle you could be using AP. Wow. At a 45 degree angle you can use AP on this. Just watch the AP once that hits. About 5,000 damage right there. Like this AP really does work. the transport so we're only gonna get a three-star op which was unfortunate the sad thing is that if those battleships spawn whether by accident or on purpose uh, the majority of players don't have the ability to really deal with that enemy cruiser sunk And that's GG with almost 300k and a Macquarie. Mm, for three stars, not bad. Almost 300k. Wait, get ribbons? Oh. Hmm, didn't even see that one. Thirteen thirty, not bad. I mean, this thing is basically a cruiser killer. That's what this thing does, is kills cruisers.
only two stars not not the best ages map but it is ages solid Merkor gameplay 32 citadels three kills 132 hips still top of the team literally firing literally nothing but AP and torpedoes literally but like the majority of it was armor piercing shells You just kind of see how the ship works, and that the AP is just the way to go on this ship. Get those broadsides, use that AP, and you'll have a really fun time in this ship, without a doubt. I love this ship, and the speed boost just makes it that much more better. <laughs> 